I'm going to start us off with a prayer. So I'm placing my hands on my heart. Mm, taking in that deep breath of love and gratitude. So grateful for this time to come together to be the two or more who are gathered in the name and the nature of love. Grateful to have this deep cleansing breath. This connection with our hearts. This connection of peace. Grateful for this opportunity to come closer to understanding and living the teachings of Jesus through A Course in Miracles. I'm grateful for the ease and grace of technology that allows us to come together. We ask that all of our earthly and heavenly helpers join us now, leading us and guiding us, blessing us in all ways, always. And we're grateful that we get to share the love that we are, the light that we are with everyone because we're one with them. In grace and gratitude, we let it be, and so it is. Amen. Hmm. All right. So before we get started, I just thought it might be good to check in with everybody and see how you're all doing. Um, since we are all uh, having this experience of living in a world of uncertainty at the moment <laughs> with this appearance of the uh, coronavirus. Um, would anyone like to share how they're doing? Leslie, go ahead. Hi, everyone. It's good to see you all. I'm doing fantastic. Thank you. I just want to say that I'm grateful to each and every one of you for being light workers along beside me. It's nice to know that there are so many like-minded people and that we can stand in the light and we know that the answer is love and not fear. And I have to tell you that we've had a couple of meetings here at work and before the meeting starts, I say, okay, I would really like to open with prayer, but that's not gonna happen. Um, I say, let's all go around with one thing that we're all grateful for. And I'll start and, I'll, and I state something that I'm grateful for and then I'll turn to the next person and say, okay, Genevieve, you're next. And then I say everybody's name and everybody around the circle says something they're grateful for. And I'm talking, I work with lawyers, <laughs> you know? So it's been, exactly, thank you, Rob. That's a big hand clap. And I did it about a week ago and then I did it again yesterday. We had another meeting at four o'clock and because when I listen and steer, see the fear on some of the people's faces, it's, I can just really have compassion for them, you know, and I'm sorry they're so scared. And, and some of you that are listening to the call might be feeling really scared too. And, and I certainly had my moment about a, a week or so ago when um, I just feel so much like I put on my Facebook cover, uh, calm is a superpower. <laughs> and I believe that. I'm just, I'm just staying strong and saying ho'oponopono whenever a thought arises. And I'm just believing this is happening for me and not to me. And, you know, this is, this is where we get to really practice. This is where, do you mean what you say? Can we, can we walk the talk or do we just talk the talk? And I don't know about you all, but I'm willing to walk the, the talk. I am there. I'm there with all of you. I'm staying strong. This too shall pass. It always does. You know, Easter's going to come. Mother's Day is going to come. Father's Day is going to come. All my plants are going to come up and then get eaten by the deer again. And just we just there's so much to be grateful for it's just where do we focus our minds on it so that's where i'm at i love you guys and thank you for your support i can i just love getting messages from lisa and natoli and there's um corinne gorilla who is a she's big into angels that she's had a lot of really helpful things to say and of course just it's just, I'm so grateful I have a spiritual community because I know a lot of people don't. 
a lot of people don't. I mean, my, and it, it certainly helps that my husband is so positive. I mean, he is just, he is not bringing me down. He's not being negative about anything. And my sister's husband is the exact opposite. He, and he's just so filled. I mean, Scott played 18 holes of golf yesterday. There's only four of them on the golf course. He had a great time, you know? So it's just so much of it. And, and I'm not trying to downplay it. I mean, I know it is serious and, and people need to take precautions and it does seem like the whole world kind of has gone a little crazy and, and that's okay. You know, right now, this, and that's the other thing I'm grateful for, is this is really forcing me to stay in the present moment. I don't get to worry about my 401k unless I want to go into panic mode. You know, I have enough right now. I'm healthy right now. So there you go. <laughs> thank you, Leslie. And thank you so much for that um, suggestion about saying the whole Pono Pono prayer every time any thought of the virus comes up, I shared that everywhere I can think of because um, it's a wonderful practice and I've been doing it ever since you posted that. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Caroline, go ahead. Hi there. Hi everyone. Um, well, I'm, I'm kind of in a mode where I, I've, I feel very calm, even though, you know, taking precautions, the same thing. I'm okay. Um, last night I saw someone who was very scared and I felt a, a sense of compassion for them and a little worried for them, but, um, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't really do anything about it, but, um, yeah, so I'm just, I'm calm and I'm trying to, I'm staying positive and people I talk to, I, I give the positive upbeats and, and you know, not as, um, as was said before, you know, not ignoring what's going on or, or anything or people's worries, but just trying to maintain that positive attitude. Last night, my husband called me and he was a little worried. And, and uh, so he just wanted to talk and we talked. And at the end of the conversation, he, he said he felt a little calmer and all that. So I'm really glad about that. And yeah, so I'm, I'm okay. Just carrying on with life as usual. Um, my daughter is the one who's getting a little worked up and I, I have to, she just had a new baby. And so I'm, you know, trying to keep her relaxed, but uh, yeah, everything's fine. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you, Karen. And surrounding your daughter and that baby with a beautiful bubble of love and protection. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Would anybody else like to share before we get into our reading this week? Phil, go ahead. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Thanks for being here. And I, I think I'm, I'm noticed like this is an opportunity because I'm noticing how much judgments are coming up for me in terms of like, you know, when people are bringing so so much fear and I noticed yesterday like we got some insider information saying that someone who works for a government contractor who said within next 48 hours or 78 hours they're going to declare like how to quarantine so go get whatever you need to get from grocery stores and you know, I, I never panicked before and I never even bought into, uh, I just said, I'm going to do my usual groceries. <laughs> and then last night, you know, we went and we were laughing and, and which also made me a little bit concerned that you know, my, my daughter and my husband makes fun of it. Uh, and I feel it is instead of being in fear, probably they are trying to underplay it, you know. And so, of course, I was amazed to see all the, the I think I went to four stores and frozen section, there was nothing on the shelves. No eggs, no <laughs> chicken, no, <laughs> some stores didn't even have vegetables. And, you know, I couldn't get rice or anything and no eggs. So, you know, I was like, no big deal. Um, it, but, you know, I think just for us being here, uh, schools are all closed, offices are closed. 
in any churches they have cancelled the services and you know in some places only 50 people <laughs> are allowed and so you know just 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 uh, thinking like you know we think we are in charge and we can control everything and right now it is the recognition that there has been always this power that is in charge and we have forgotten and now i think this whole thing is bringing us back to the basis back to who we really are and i think that is the place i am at and you know and i'm like okay if if the quarantine is going to come in force so you know why resist it whatever you know you know the only thing that i feel like people who are older and alone and i don't want them to be isolated but how can we reach out to them you know so that's where i am thanks for listening thank you phil diane and then carla oh carla maybe you should have gone before me <laughs> because i was just going to bring up um i don't know how many of you have done any of the enneagram courses or classes with Rosalind or I haven't done any recent ones, but I did them a couple of years ago when she, um, when she gave them. And uh, the reason I mentioned Carla was because uh, I know Carla, you're the same as I am. We're both sixes. And um, what, and I think I've heard you talk about this, Leslie, is that um, with the number six Enneagram is I think at least 50% of the population or more. Um, and, and I happen to be in that, um, at least I would say that's my, my number of choice. And the number sixes come right out of fear. Um, being, being unsafe and feeling insecure is that huge um, component of a six. And that's where I, I see myself looking at things from the lens of a six. And that's where all my fear is coming up. And I feel myself like uh, judging other people for what they're doing and not doing and not doing correctly and those kinds of things. So um, anyways, it's, it's helping me to, um, as a six, it's, it's uh, my practice is to remain in my compassionate heart. And, um, and that's my practice throughout the whole day. And uh, as a lot of you know, I have this predisposing lung issue right now. <coughs> and so what's happening is kind of really bringing the fear out in me. Um, so my things have changed. I'm not going on life as normal. I am choosing to do what I can to keep myself healthy and not contribute to using the healthcare system. Um, and I just find that the six in me keeps, keeps coming up in a powerful way. Um, and I, I mean, I'm, I am not hoarding or standing at Costco with baskets of toilet paper. However, like a couple of weeks ago, I did make a trip to Costco. I am fairly well stocked because I am making the choice to stay home. Um, <coughs> but it's, um, it, the, the Enneagram has been really helpful for me, is what I want to say, is to just see that, oh, Diane, your lens is coming up. You know, you can make another choice and look through a six right now, remain in your, in your compassionate heart. And today's lesson I found really helpful. Um, I am entitled to miracles. And just really um, spending time with that. Uh, and also... Um, I talked with, with Robin about this last night because we're prayer partners. It's really focusing on the, the miracles that we are seeing around us. And I'm finding like some of those miracles are just bringing me to absolute tears. Like 
with Italy, Franca, I think about you and your family and, you know, like, I mean, I'm sure you've all seen those things coming up on Facebook stuff that just makes me cry to see how like heroic people are being and, um, and I just, and I love that, um, you know, our people on the front line are people that are very dear to my heart, those that are working in healthcare. So, you know, it's just really um, keeping on focusing on all the, the, the best of humanity that's coming out right now. And to just let my little six self <laughs> sit down and be quiet and calm down so that I can really um, stay in my compassionate heart is, is my true desire. The deep desire of my heart right now is to calm that down and to, to remain there. Thank you. Diane, I am the six, I am six too. <laughs> <laughs> oh and robin too <laughs> all you sixes just chill everything's okay <laughs> i found it to be really helpful um my husband and i watched um the movie about mr rogers this weekend a beautiful day in the neighborhood it was perfect it was perfect so you know if anybody's feeling really scared uh, go to Amazon and watch that movie because it will calm you right down. And, you know, his, his uh, way of being where his mother told him, you know, in any time of uh, crisis, look for the helpers. That's, you know, uh, that, like Leslie was talking about, that practice of gratitude. So thank you for that, Diane. Carla, go ahead. Okay, I'm mute. So, so I, it's interesting that David's here now. So it seems like we need, we don't need twice as much. We need three times as much because he, he, he has different, different proclivities, I guess, than I do. So, and you think that he's a guy, he's less toilet paper or he's more, way more than twice as much. I don't know how that happens, but so he is at Costco standing in line. And so that's his choice. And I know, I know this is like, a must be a great healing coming up because a lot of people are, this last stuff is coming up. I mean, you know, people talking about it in line at Costco, and um, I went to the bank yesterday, and I, and for some reason I had a little throw up, and so I was coughing, and this lady was like, didn't come in line. She still wanted to stand at the other end of the store. Yeah, whatever. But it doesn't matter appearances aren't even real anyhow but i know i really hold i don't know what's going to come out of this but something amazing must be ha happening because uh everything has to come to the surface for healing right and that's it's really doing that all over so that's all i want to say thanks thank you carla Anybody else want to, oh, go ahead, Robin. There you are. Well, I'm a proud six two, and I, it was kind of, um, not to get off into the Enneagram and it's very new to me. Um, and, but it, it, it is people who see their lens is through fear and anxiety. So it's helpful for me to know that. And, um, there's a nine, nine, place too and the nine is about calm and quiet and so I'm I'm like I'm going to reach out for that and I have been thank God I'm in, in uh, the spiritual path that just makes such a an, um, I'm more afraid of some things that I won't mention than I am of the virus than some of you know <laughs> it's like but um 
uh, and I did, and I mean, I know we all know people. We just learned that my son and daughter-in-law are in a, their whole city has been quarantined and everybody's in lockdown. And we learned that yesterday. So I just bring them up. Um, um, and he works at a nursery and their, their concern is they watering the plants. And of course, I, you know, that seems real important. And um, so there's that. Um, so this came to me yesterday or in seeing the good or trying to keep my energy up and um, so for me, my choice is to stay at home. And for me, it's about, oh my goodness, here is something. And this is just for me. It's like, I feel the universe is calling us all to stay at home. And it's sort of like, we can all agree, um, maybe to some extents or others, but for me, it's like a commitment to my brothers and sisters um, and that we can do this. We can kind of come together as a community in oneness by just this little act of staying home. And um, the other thing that came up for me, my husband and I have been, been um, committing to walk every day and we we decided to go choose a park and uh, we've been walking in the park and it has just been so uh, joyful and it's quiet and healing and I mean I, it's compelling it's like oh I because I'm not an exercise person and I try to exercise and it doesn't last but walking in the in the woods and on the trails has just been so compelling and uplifting, but it's about 10 minutes away. And for the time being, I think we will just walk in our neighborhood because what has come for me is Mother Earth is saying, I am sick and I need to rest and I need to be able to heal. Please stay home. And I don't know where that came from, but when I think of Mother Nature needing a respite from all of our doings and goings and comings, it, it, and I'm, it suits me to stay at home. I, I'm retired. I've been having practice of more home time, so it's not as uh, a challenge. Um, and yet there are places uh, choosing to go to Quaker meeting, only 10 people showed up. Well, only 15 show up regularly, but I, I'm, and that's a half an hour away. But, but so I've come to this place of rest where I, I'm wanting to come together with my brothers and sisters in the world and, and to stay home, not only in separation, but to bring us together in oneness and to give Mother Earth the, respite um, from our all that we do and in that it is very calming and soothing and um thank you so much thank you robin yeah i'm so grateful that we have this online platform where we can come together and um you know when so many of us are either self-isolating or being told that we have to isolate. Um, it's, uh, it's a great comfort to know that y'all are here. And when we talk to each other on our Facebook group or our WhatsApp group, it's a great comfort. Thank you. Penelope. Um, just to say to thank you to everyone um, for what everyone's said um, so far. Um, I feel like, I mean, apart from the fact I'm doing great, I'm doing really great, and I'm actually quite excited about what's going on, which sounds a little crazy actually, um, but I am quite excited about it because I just feel there's like some huge shift is taking place. 
Um, and yeah, I get fearful thoughts. I hand them over. I use the Ho'oponopono. I also use the, the some wording from the um, healing and recovery book. So I cancel any belief in coronavirus. So I use that as well. Um, I use the um, call Archangel Michael to cut all cords of fear and negativity. So that's another one. Um, and yeah, I'm just keep coming back to that place of peace. It's just, a, it's so beautiful to be able to do that and to recognize that the amount of work that I've done these past years, the difference it's making now. Um, now I do feel a little crazy about this and it may not happen how I'd like it to, but um, I have been continuing to run my Tai Chi classes. And yes, there has been this thought that the church wardens would make the decision and inform the parish office that they were closing um, the entire complex. And that email actually came through while I was still teaching this morning. And because we were only a couple of weeks away before I was actually going to take a natural break at Easter, I've actually responded to the email and I'm asking them if they would allow me to just run the last two for the rest of this month, which considering how many people are, you know, are talking about isolating, it feels a little crazy and going against kind of the grain. But that's what I'm asking for. And I'm, you know, my intention is to let go of any attachment to the outcome for that. I've, I've only got a small group that are attending at the moment and they're willing, they'd like it to continue even if it's just for two more weeks. Um, it was very powerful teaching this morning um, because I'm teaching Tai Chi, but basically I'm teaching peace. So it's so important to me to, to continue to teach the peace and to hold the space for everybody. Um, and in my town in the UK, the only challenge um, that is beginning to impact is just getting hold of certain things in the grocery store, um, which is, is becoming, becoming a challenge. Um, and other than that, um, there's not a huge impact for me, my husband and I personally at the moment here. Um, the schools are still open. Um, and yeah, it's, I'm just, it, um, ramping up my practice all the time on a daily basis um, and just just great to to be here this afternoon so thank you everybody thank you penelope anybody else want to share before we get into our reading today how about you linda how are you doing I, i'm doing well uh, my sister-in-law reached out to us from she lives in oregon and um, asked how we were doing because she's concerned, of course, about her brother. And um, I told her it's a little uh, odd because where my husband works, uh, they have been encouraging folks to work from home if they have the capabilities. But unfortunately, because of the nature of Rudy's job, uh, taking care of everybody's computers, um, he can't work from home. <laughs> you know, people can't come to our house and bring their computers here. Um, but he is, he's, uh, they've given him gloves, surgical gloves to use. Um, he has the Clorox wipes to wipe down all of the equipment. He uses the Purell, Purell. He's, you know, keeping his distance from folks as much as he can and washing his hands. And, um, you know, I asked him how he's feeling about that because he is immune compromised on his anti-rejection medications for his, um, kidney transplant and um, he said he's feeling fine. Um, you know, we're all just being smart and uh, as safe as we can and uh, this too shall pass. So yeah, we're doing okay. I mean, we have our moments. I was a little irritated at not being able to pick up more than one roll of toilet paper for my mom at the grocery store. <laughs> but you know, it is what it is and and um you know if she has to use kleenex or paper towels or napkins whatever you know we'll deal with it one day at a time <laughs> plus we do have like a shower <laughs> so yeah we're doing good here thanks for asking leslie there was a suggestion of oh. of, of people uh, Leaves, we can go if you have leaves in your yard. 
<laughs> Thank you, Robin. Now I know why we didn't rake all those leaves last year. <laughs> 911 said, please don't call us about your, 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 you know, your toilet paper. Just be creative. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, that's hysterical. Go ahead, Caroline. Oh, you're muted. There yeah. you go. I'll, I'll keep it short. But, um, you know, I know it is a serious situation and there are people who are sick and, and we have to be take, you know, take care. But, it does help maybe once in a while to laugh about it, laugh and, and try to keep that humor up. Uh, yesterday I was sitting at the dinner table with my daughter and her husband and <laughs> we were laughing and, and it, I live in Mexico and they're, well, my daughter's more Mexican than American and her, her personality. And so their Mexicans are very um, easygoing and they like to joke around and that kind of thing. So, they started joking about the toilet paper and all this and and pretty soon we had this whole scenario going where um that that if everything went to you know where we'd all run to our ranch and we'd start a commune there and we had this whole thing but it was fun you know but but still she was still as i said she was like really strict about quarantine and we got to stay home and da, da, da. and um pretty soon my son was in on it so I mean, I don't mean to make jokes about it because it's a serious matter, but it does help once in a while to kind of keep that humor up about it because it, it, it helps eliminate the fear factor, you know, while still taking precautions. And um, finally, I had to leave the room because it was getting too much, but because I, I know there are people out there that are very worried and fearful and so, but it does, the humor once in a while does help. Yeah. Laughter is yeah. the best medicine always. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yep, that was it. <laughs> Thank you, Caroline. Well, let's get into this. So um, we're, we read the reflection of holiness. And um, I mean, I just right out of the gate, the highlighted the first few sentences in the very first paragraph where he says, the atonement does not make holy. You were created holy. It merely brings unholiness to holiness, or what you made to what you are. Bringing illusion to truth, or the ego to God, is the Holy Spirit's only function. Keep not your making from your Father, for hiding it has cost you knowledge of Him and of yourself. So, we don't have to do anything to be holy. We were created that way. We were created that way, which is why we're entitled to miracles. So, um, yeah, I thought that was really helpful. Um, the other thing that I highlighted that I just want to cover uh, quickly was um, in paragraph two and three, uh, towards the middle of the paragraph where he says, what disappears in light is not attacked. It merely vanishes because it is not true. And then um, in paragraph three, the second sentence, starting in the sec second sentence, the atonement is so gentle, you need but whisper to it and all its power will rush to your assistance and support. You are not frail with God beside you. And when he talks about what disappeared is not attacked, it merely vanishes because it's not true. The first thought that popped into my head is that's waking up from the dream of illusion. It just vanishes. Like when you wake up from a dream at night. Um, so we're, uh, you know, we're good. <laughs> we have nothing to worry about, right? And it's good that he can remind us here over and over and over again. Who else would like to share? Phil and then Carla. And thanks, Linda, because I also highlighted exactly the same line. <laughs> right up to the atonement is gentle and but and, and you need but whisper to it. And you know, I thought right now. All of that is bringing everything to light 
And, you know, last week when we talked and I was feeling like alone and I had this lesson which really turned things around for me and lesson 80, you know, which says, let me recognize my problems have been solved. And so, you know, I was also thinking in the light of what's going on right now. So we also have to recognize that it is already being solved and we are just being an illusion. And it's, it's not, you know, the question, of course, immediately popped for me. Like, are you trying to do spiritual bypass here? And I'm like, no, it is not recognizing, making it, creating the separation, creating that whole thing of, oh, I'm alone and God is not with me. And the recognition here for me is recognizing I am not alone and I'm not going through it alone. And you know, as a sex, you can feel because you have so much of that anxiety, you could feel like, oh, I'm alone and nobody understands me. <laughs> and just, just to remember that, you know, and recognize that I am not alone. And actually, before even the problem showed up, it was already solved and I'm only seeing the after effects of it, it is already healed and whole. Yeah. Thank you. And I, I also liked uh, which followed, but uh, which followed uh, immediately after you said, you are not frail. You are not frail with God besides you, but without him, you are nothing. And I thought that is, that is when, you know, I get the effect of it the moment I think I'm alone. So, and that then I'm not, nothing without that. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Phil. Carla. Thank you, Drew. I had a couple of things that come up, but... Uh... Carla, you muted yourself, honey. I don't know how you did that, but. <laughs> uh, my computer, if I bump, the, the, if I touch it, if I touch it anyway, sometimes if I don't even touch it, it doesn't. So what I was drawn to was the last paragraph. The last line, last few lines, but basically the last line is really important. Is it they, uh, I don't, I guess his creations, they do not merely reflect truth, but they are truth. And that's that I am too, because I'm his creation as well. And so um, I don't have to, it's, it is about remembering the truth. Sometimes when I was in uh, Baja in 2015, I had this vision where the, the truth is like at the center, which I am too, but there's all these dots, things, things that adhere to us, judgments, and that we're, our mission or whatever is to navigate, navigate through them to the truth. But all I need to do is, is let them recognize that they're not even real. We, we are real. That's what it says. We are truth. We are real. We give the illusions reality by believing them. That's why fear, or doubt, or whatever comes up for you, whatever it is, seems so real. Because we give it our reality by giving it our belief. So... I don't know, I think I've shared this, maybe shared this before, but it's relatively short. It's not a poem. Every seeming problem has a solution. The solution is realizing there 
is no problem. The answer, if needed, is to let go of the belief that there is one, a problem. Every seeming problem is a healing and folding, a miracle in process. It's the same with this coronavirus. So this is where we're always valuable, but this is where we're even, I don't know, even more seems like a judgment valuable to the world is it it's up to uh, not up to us it's words are just poor um ways of communication but to hold the truth so what can we is address the appearance like when i was laying in the floor with a with a ankle broken ankle whatever I dressed the appearance. I crawled to the couch or whatever. I called an ambulance. You know, at the hospital. I didn't call an ambulance, but I went into the hospital. I addressed the truth. I addressed the appearance, but I held the truth. I didn't go into fear. I know everything is gently planned for good. It's not, and it is, I used to believe it was to us and i know it kind of for us but it's actually by us by our higher selves and we have joined with everyone to create whatever this is for our healing i know that that's true so this when i rip when i see that the truth that i know i'm true and i used to pray for well, realization of truth, but to be aware of what I already am, what we all already are, what the world already is. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Carla. Would anybody else like to share? Amanda. Hi. <laughs> Hi there, everyone. I'm so grateful for this, for Zoom, and for all of you. Um, well, I was just going to read this, something that stood out to me um, in this reading. It was uh, on number seven. Uh, Paragraph seven, could you but realize for a single instant the power of healing that the reflection of God shining in you can bring to all the world? You could not wait to make the mirror of your mind clean to receive the image of the holiness that heals the world. The image of holiness that shines in your mind is not obscure and will not change. Its meaning to those who look upon it is not obscure, for everyone perceives it as the same all bring their different problems to its healing light and all their problems find but healing there. Oh, I just think that's so beautiful in itself. And wow, I mean, just to think about what's happening globally as we all share in this thing, as Carla keeps saying, you know, everything there's so much coming up for healing that we can you know that we can either you know it's up to us in that holy instant to to decide whether we want to heal that little thing or not or that big thing or whatever it is as they say you know all all bring their different problems to its healing light but um so we all you know have our perception it's just so interesting. The whole thing is so interesting. Um, I had two interesting interactions yesterday. Um, I was at the store. I had to go to the store to get some things. And I'm not one to 
you know, do this panic or anything. Um, but I was just getting some stuff for dinner and I thought I'd check and see if there was toilet paper, you know. <laughs> I'm just more so curious. Is there toilet paper on the shelf at this store? <laughs> there was. I, I don't know. Anyway, um, so my one thing that's really I that's coming up for healing for me that I am having to deal with right now is my 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 dad I live in far northern California near Eureka California on the coast in the redwoods so um last night as of midnight last night um the whole bay area, bay area got put on um a shelter in place for 6.7 million people in that in the whole San Francisco Bay Area, which is um, five hours. Hang on, my husband's walking by talking and I'm gonna shut the door. And um, which is five hours south of here. Anyway, um, anyway, hang on one second. I'm I'm on the phone. Can you close the door? Okay, thank you. Sorry. <laughs> and um okay. Anywho, so that's, um, it, it, I'm just, you know, so I have a little bit of, a little bit of fear going on. So my dad is in a, um, is in a uh, nursing home up here. And so now uh, I just finally made the decision a few weeks ago that he was going to stay there. I was going to try and get him to come home, but he's been declining really kind of a little bit more rapidly in the last um, year or so. And um he gets infections all the time. He's immunosuppressed. He's on an immunosuppressant drug, you know, all these things. And last week I got, I went to go see him. And then of course on Friday, they, and they announced, you know, nobody can go into the nursing home anymore. So um, I was in the store and buying some things and I had, and I had talked to him on the phone the day before. So, you know, anywho, this, this my phone rang and I'm in the aisle and, and um, it was the doctor at the nursing home. And she called to tell me that, just to give me an update on his health. And, and um, but I kind of went into this like, kind of freak out panic mode for a minute. Cause I thought she was gonna like tell me he was dying. And just the way she started telling me how he was declining and he's lost you know, this amount of weight over the last month. And I mean, I just broke down and sat down in the aisle and started crying and just listening to her. And it was just so interesting. It didn't take me in the, you know, before I would have been like, if I wouldn't have been, you know, with, with A Course in Miracles and Master for Living and all this stuff, you know, I could have easily just really let that affect me, you know, differently. And at first I did, you know, I was like, Oh my God, Oh my God, are you, you know, what's happening? I can't even go see him. And I, you know, just broke down in tears and this woman, and then here we are with this whole global situation where we can't even like touch each other. And this woman stood there and said, let you know, are you okay? Let's take some deep breaths together. And she held the space for me. And um, after I got the phone, and because um, I'm sitting in the eye, the pasta aisle, you know, crying on the floor, sitting there Indian style, and she just just sat down a little ways from me and just held the space with me and you know breathed with me and. It was just such a beautiful moment. <sighs> Sorry. Just, um, I don't even know what to say, the reflection. <laughs> Um, you know, it just, it was just so beautiful. 
the reflection. I saw it very clearly at that moment. And so anyway, um, and then I had another interaction later where this woman was freaking out in the, um, in the checkout behind me because she couldn't find her debit card. And, um, and so she had some cash on her, but she was like, you know, going into panic mode, like, Oh my God, Oh my God, where's my debit? Oh my God, where, I don't know where I left it and all this stuff. And I've been there. I know that feeling, you know, and uh, you know, but still in my head, like I wanted to like judge, you know, and like, you know, what's this, this woman's freaking out. She needs to calm down, you know, like in my head, like I was going through this like judgment thing. And then I did, so then I did for her what this woman had done for me. And I just said, just let's take three deep breaths together. Let's just take three deep breaths. And so she did. And I think it helped calm her down. And um, she was crying at that point. And then I ended up, she didn't, couldn't find her debit card and she didn't have enough. She had like one item she didn't have enough money for. So I ended up paying for it for her. And, um, I don't know. I just, you know, <laughs> it was just, in, I don't know, just so much. There's so much beauty out there to behold. If we can just see it that way, I guess. I don't know. I have so much, there's so much around all of it and just the reflection, the piece with the reflection in the mirror really kind of spoke to me in today's reading. So thank you so much for letting me talk that all out. <laughs> thank you for that beautiful share, Amanda. I'm so grateful that that angel was there to sit with you and hold space during that time. And uh, just know that we're all there with you, loving you and um, praying for you and your dad. I know it must not be easy, but yeah, we love you so much. Thank you. Carla, go ahead, honey. What I, um, thank you, Amanda. I was, what came to my mind is when you were expressing about that experience and even in your emotion or whatever, is it, only love is real. All this stuff, all this other stuff is just uh, debris, I guess, in the way of us seeing that. And that's why I heard what you expressed. That's what I heard, is that only love is real. That's all. There's the truth, right? Go ahead, Christine. Yeah, thank you for all the shares today, everybody. And um, Amanda, when you were talking and you were sharing your story, I kept thinking that's exactly what we're supposed to be doing. This is exactly what we're supposed to be experiencing. That's, this is the opening up for everybody that, you know, for us that have the practice, but for those that don't have the practice, it's a time, it's a shake up to wake up. It really is, you know, and that's beautiful. And I was in the grocery store the other day too, and there was uh, our local grocery store hardly has anything in it. Like all the, you know, everything's pretty much empty too. And I was grabbing a few things for my parents and there was a, a lady with her two grown children and she was, they were just talking and I smiled because it's just, I always do that. That's nothing new, but you know, I smiled at them and I was talking to the cashier saying, how are you doing today? And how are they going? Anyways, and so then this other woman though, who was there with her two grown children, um, we were just smiling and saying hello to each other. And she shared that her daughter, um, she has a handicapped daughter that needs uh you know, diapers all the time. And so you know, these aren't conversations we would typically have, right? Normally, we go to the grocery store, we buy our stuff and we leave. And I was able to share with her because my mom needs stuff at night too, um, not all day, but at night. And anyways, we were able to converse and share. And she said she'd been everywhere and everybody was sold out. And I was able to tell her about, you know, a little place around the corner that still probably had stuff. And you know, and introduced her to that. But typically, right, we don't do those kinds of things. We don't have those interactions 
you know, turn around necessarily and look at the person behind you in the grocery store and start talking about a handicapped daughter that needs diapers. And that's the beauty. And I keep seeing it over and over as I have been out and about, you know, people sharing those more personal, intimate things. Because we are a little bit more vulnerable right now. And yet I find it just to be the most beautiful experience. So I'm, it's beautiful. Thanks for your share, Amanda. I think that's just gorgeous, lovely, and how beautiful that somebody sat down with you and just held space with you. Right? And it's, it's a reminder that I keep thinking this is, this is our time. This is exactly what we're here for. It's exactly why we came. And it's an opportunity for us to show up and do the work that we know how to do and apply it and, um, and hold space for others too that maybe don't have the same tools that we do right now, right? So I love it. I love listening to everybody's shares today. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, Christine. Um, so we're getting to the end. Um, oh, and I wanted to say, uh, this is a time to wake up. Wake up, that's what it says on my shirt today. <laughs> this is a time to wake up. Um, and Amanda, your reading just reminded me of, um, we have our work to do. As people who have come together um, as a spiritual community to be light workers for ourselves and for each other, we have our work to do. And uh, sometimes that work might mean that we're taking really good care of ourselves by reaching out to um, other people that can hold space for us. And sometimes it means that we get to hold space for other people. Um, so yeah, keeping our mirrors cleaned um, so that we can see the truth about everybody. Yeah, thank you all. So um, next week, uh, we've already covered um, the rest of this chapter uh, on other calls. <laughs> so, Linda, Linda yes. I'm sorry. I meant to message you about this, but and I know it's really last minute, but I just want to let everybody know I think we've already read chapter 30, section four, the truth behind illusions, but it is so helpful, so helpful in this situation. Just want to say then the other thing that just came to me is this is our time to shine. Yeah. <laughs> As light workers, this is our time. We get to shine. So sorry to interrupt. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> Thank you for that. Yeah, so if you're drawn to that, it is helpful. I remember reading it. Um, so, but next week we're going to be focusing on um, chapter 15, section three, uh, which I also feel is gonna be helpful for what we're um, seeing in the appearance of the world at the moment. It's littleness versus magnitude. So uh, we're being called to be magnificent and let the littleness go. So I thought that would be a great reading for us for next week. Um, I do also want to acknowledge uh, Rand. Oh, you're not sharing your video at the moment, but um, Rand's father did make his transition last week. And uh, there you are, my sweet friend. I just want to acknowledge that and you know, let you know that uh, you've been my, in my thoughts and prayers and uh, love you so much. Anything you would like to say? He passed uh, pretty painlessly, and that was what we wished for him at that time. And so now we're just kind of reviewing his life and coming to terms with both the good and the bad and, and uh, letting it be and uh, moving on and, and trying to uh, see what that all means for us at this point our lives yeah yep it will be interesting for uh and i'm trying to put it into the lessons learned category yeah <laughs> yeah wouldn't it wouldn't be wonderful just to kind of be able to eavesdrop on um what he is seeing and hearing and experiencing at this moment uh now that he's made his transition um yes <laughs> I saw some of the things that you posted and I'm, it just made me chuckle. So 
I'm glad you're keeping your sense of humor about it too. Thanks. Yeah. Love you so much. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks. Um, so I'm going to read in my lesson for today, the uh, pathways of light insights for workbook lesson number 77 is the one that I'm on. I am entitled to miracles, which is what we were talking about earlier. Today's lesson means I am entitled to remember my true identity. I am entitled to remember the peace of God. I am entitled to extend what I am, the love, joy, and peace of God to everyone. I am entitled to be happy. As I am willing to accept my entitlement, my mind opens more and more to accept the truth. I am part of God. Everyone is part of God. God is but love, and therefore so am I. Inherent in love is God's peace, God's joy, God's giving all to all. This is true happiness. I am entitled to true happiness because it is already mine. It has always been mine. I'm just learning now to accept my entitlement. Last night I woke up and realized I was concerned about a friend. I took that concern to the Holy Spirit. It seemed like a hopeless situation. The Holy Spirit reminded me that I am the peace of God. He reminded me that my friend is the peace of God. My friend is still safe, whether I remember it or not. My friend's identity cannot change. The Holy Spirit reminded me that it is not helpful for me to join my friend's hallucinations of lack and loss. What is helpful is to remember the truth about her. It is helpful to remember that she is still the peace of God. She is still as God created her. Nothing can ever change that. Illusions of harm are just that, illusions. I spent time telling my friend mentally that she is the peace of God. This also helped me remember that I am the peace of God. This was very helpful for me. I asked for a miracle and received it. I received the change of mind, the change in perception that I asked for. The feeling of worry was transformed into feeling of peace. I am entitled to miracles every day. It is up to me to open my mind to receive them. That is what today and every day is for. As I open up to and am willing to accept the miracles that are always there waiting for my acceptance, my mind is healed. I am entitled to miracles means that I am entitled to happiness because God's will for me is happiness. If I am not experiencing happiness, I need to change my mind. I need a new view of what I think I am perceiving. Unhappiness can only come from believing that I am not as what I was created by the source of happiness. It is that belief that must be changed. It is that change of mind that is a miracle. This is why it is important anytime I am feeling less than peaceful and joyful to affirm that I am entitled to miracles. I do not need to accept fear, sadness, guilt, anger, or distress of any kind. I am entitled to miracles. Through my studies of A Course in Miracles, I have come to experience more and more peace and happiness in my life. Yet, if I honestly look at how I feel throughout the day, I cannot claim to be perfectly happy and in deep peace in every moment. This tells me that I need to be reminded that I am entitled to miracles. I still need to be reminded about my true identity. I still need to be reminded that God has not changed his mind about me. He still gives me all of his joy, all of his peace, all of his love, all the time. I want the peace of God fully without limits. I want to be able to see my brother as innocent always, no matter what behavior he appears to be displaying. I want to be able to feel the love of God flowing through me and connecting with every brother in every instant. In truth, this is what is happening all the time. It is only the shadows of false images and mistaken beliefs that keep me from recognizing this as a fact now. And so I am grateful for this lesson, which reminds me that I am entitled to miracles. With a combination of studying the Course 
applying these lessons to my everyday life and a little willingness. The thought of being entitled to miracles because of who I am is finally beginning to sink into my head. There are no words for the peace and serenity this thought gives me. I find myself still resisting. I think because the thought is so alien to me. In my own sick way, I fear change, even if the change is for the better. But I find that as I slowly let go of the old tapes and begin trusting God, the Holy Spirit, I begin to welcome change and realize it is possible that I am entitled to miracles. As I remember this, I try to apply this thought in my personal life with my loved ones, in my work life, especially when my boss is in my perception irrational, or with people in my world who aren't behaving the way I feel they should. This course in itself is a miracle in my life, and for that I am truly grateful. I place my belief of this thought at the altar of my Heavenly Father, Holy Spirit, Please help me have the willingness to use this thought throughout the day. Amen. Uh, while we're still in this prayerful state, um, I would just like to bring um, Kathleen and her partner Paul into this um, loving prayer. Um, Paul's not doing so well. And uh, Kathleen's having some struggles with feeling like uh, because she is seeing this appearance on her world that she has some blame about it. Um, so just allowing her to release all of those feelings that there is blame and um, know that all is well, no matter what the appearance for both of them. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. Much love. See you next week. Oh, and just so you know, too, um, I noticed that uh, we were having some struggles uploading from Zoom, um, the Masterful Living class from last night. Uh, we think it's because Zoom is being used a lot more right now <laughs> because so many people are working from home. So it may take a couple days to get the um, replay posted. If anybody was interested, I just wanted to let you know that, too. Love you all. See you soon. Bye for now. Thanks, Linda. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Diane. Bye. Bye, -bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye.